Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is News Feed Now. Good Thursday morning, everybody. Glad you can join us here for News Feed Now. I'm Suzanne Brunner taking a look at today's top trending stories. They include an eight year old called a hero after saving his baby sister's life. But you got to wait to see who he credits for his quick actions. Plus, we are taking a look at March Madness tradition between a group of friends spanning nearly four decades. Quite a long time. But first, we're going to start with President Biden's infrastructure plan. He unveiled a massive two trillion dollar infrastructure plan that's already facing pushback from Washington over the price tag and what's inside. Washington correspondent Kelly Meyer has the details. In a nearly 30 minute speech, President Joe Biden shared his vision. It's a vision not seen through the eyes of Wall Street or Washington, but through the eyes of hardworking people. The plan would invest $621 billion into roads, bridges, and public transit, more than $300 billion into improving drinking water infrastructure and expanding broadband, and $580 billion into American manufacturing and jobs. It builds a fair economy that gives everybody a chance to succeed. To pay for it, President Biden would roll back former President Donald Trump's cut in the corporate tax rate. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell says the plan is a Trojan horse for the large set of tax hikes in a generation. The generally bipartisan issue could face opposition from not only Republicans, but Democrats too. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer promises to see it through. It's something that I think is very important and I'm going to fight hard to see that it get done. And that was Kelly Meyer reporting. President Biden is set to hold his first meeting with his cabinet this afternoon and is set to promote his infrastructure plan. We'll keep you updated on that. Also, a North Carolina man accused of using eye drops to poison and kill his wife. This was back in 2018. Well, now he's been arrested for setting fire to a medical helicopter mid-flight in 2019. Joshua Hunsucker was already out of jail on bond awaiting trial on charges for allegedly murdering his wife and now he was given a $50,000 unsecured bond. In November of 2019, a police report showed a piece of medical equipment was intentionally set on fire inside of a helicopter while in flight. Hunsucker faces a felony charge. In New York, police have arrested a man accused of attacking an Asian woman outside of a Manhattan building on Monday. A Manhattan district attorney says Brandon Elliott faces multiple charges. State records show Elliott has several past arrests. That includes in 2002 for stabbing his own mother to death when he was 19 years old. Nicole Johnson has more on this investigation. Police say this is Brandon Elliott seen on surveillance video assaulting a 65 year old Asian woman and yelling, you don't belong here. After his arrest, Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance had this message. This brave woman belongs here. Asian American New Yorkers belong here. Everyone belongs here. The attack happened in Hell's Kitchen as the woman was walking to church Monday afternoon. Police arrested Elliot overnight after staking out a nearby hotel turned homeless shelter. Police Commissioner Dermot Shea credits these detectives for cracking the case. The quick work by NYPD investigators in this case reinforces the dedication of every member of the NYPD. We will never accept or tolerate hate or violence of any kind in our great city. Elliot is on lifetime parole after serving 17 years in prison for murdering his own mother in 2002 in the Bronx, stabbing her in front of his then five-year-old sister. Given his criminal history, there were many questions about Elliot's parole parameters, from walking the streets to living in a homeless shelter. The police commissioner spoke out about it exclusively on PIX11's Morning News. Releasing people and putting them in homeless shelters, I've been harping on this for years now, and, and I think, you know, you just shake your head and say, what could possibly go wrong? And this is what goes wrong. To that, Mayor Bill de Blasio had this to say. We are going to have all the agencies work together to address these issues. The 65-year-old woman is the latest victim in a wave of Asian hate crimes in New York City. The NYPD urges New Yorkers to step up and get involved, but also be careful. Please try not to get physical with the assailant. And too often we've seen people pull out their cameras to take video. Understand that that could be detrimental as well. 
Nicole Johnson reporting also in New York as police departments and communities get ready to submit their police reform plans this week. Some concerns are being raised in Ithaca about the selection of one member in its police advisory group. Richard Rivera spent 39 years in prison for killing a police officer. Adrian Smith sat down with Rivera to find out how he earned his spot on the board. Nonprofits. It was 1981. So, Richard Rivera was 16 years old when he shot and killed execution style an off duty New York City police officer, Robert Walsh, a father of four. After spending 39 years in prison, the now 57 year old Rivera is helping to shape Ithaca's police reform plan as a community board member. So I sit in a cell, right, uh, agonizing over this deed of mine. Right? I killed somebody. And I'm saying to myself, you know, how, how, how do I move forward? What do I do? I cannot change the past. And I have to arrive at a decision. I have to say to myself, what am I going to do with my future? How am I going to move forward from here? Rivera was appointed to the position based on his community involvement and job as an outreach coordinator. He helps the homeless. So how does the police union feel about a cop killer being on the advisory board? No comment when I reached out to them, but ahead of Wednesday night's common council vote on the report, the union did release this statement reading in part, we value the lived experiences of the many who share in that sentiment and the Ithaca Police Benevolent Association could not agree more. Change is needed now. The family of Officer Walsh is quoted in the New York Post as saying, we're completely shocked that the man who murdered my father is being trusted to create police reforms. It's the reality of me. And, um, and it's jarring when you first meet that. Okay, a guy who was convicted of a murder of a New York City police officer is now involved in our efforts to reimagine police, uh, public safety. Not policing, public safety, right? I act every day and I behave in a way every day that I hope on this and respects the memory of my victim. And, and, and that memory for me is that of the highest human standards and, uh, 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 of, of servitude, of, of compassion, and of caring. Now let's move on to the very latest on the coronavirus pandemic. We are getting answers on whether it is safe to mix different COVID vaccine brands. While experts say it's better to stick with one, Alex Bazargian tells us there are exceptions. Three federally approved vaccines on the market, picking and choosing can be overwhelming. Experts say once you decide, it's important to remember one thing. The official recommendations are that you complete your vaccination uh, schedule with one brand because that's the way the studies were done. Dr. Lawton Davis, director of the Coastal Health District, says when it comes to mixing vaccines, the data just isn't there. Experts don't yet know if there are benefits or disadvantages, but Davis says because Pfizer and Moderna's vaccine uses similar biotechnology, mixing them will likely still offer protection. I believe it is stated that if you accidentally receive the wrong dose as your second dose, the wrong flavor is your second dose, that you not have to repeat it if it's Pfizer and Moderna. If you happen to have an allergic reaction to either Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine, the Center for Disease Control says do not get your second shot. Davis says because the Johnson & Johnson vaccine takes a slightly different approach to building an immunity, it could be an alternative. If they wait a month and after discussion with their doctor and you know whatever, uh, they can receive a dose of Johnson & Johnson and still achieve uh, full vaccination status. Alex Bozargian, WSAV News 3, on your side. Now, there is a study going on right now in the UK to find out if mixing vaccines can actually better prepare your body to fight the virus. Some researchers say it may even help against COVID variants. Turning now to Pennsylvania, that's where a second grader is being hailed a hero. Eight-year-old Jackson Dempsey saved his baby sister's life using a skill he learned on TV. Caroline Forback has more. Eight-year-old Jackson Dempsey of Hazleton loves being a big brother to 20-month-old Layla. You get to take care of her and when you're bigger and when she loves you and she gets to talk, you can... Uh, give her a bottle. Wednesday, he noticed Layla was choking on a chicken nugget while their dad was driving. He sprang into action. It made me feel scared because I thought she was going to die. But then 
uh, the scene came into my mind. I told my dad to pull over, then I started to pat her back. He leaned her forward and used the heel of his hand to slap her back between the shoulder blades. Her face was bright purple and red, and uh, she wasn't really breathing. And Jackson sprung into action before I even opened the door. In about 30 seconds, Jackson was able to dislodge the nugget. I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, he's always been a, a really good big brother and that, but I never knew he would know what to do with that, you know? I could do a flip. Jackson says he learned the move from watching an episode of Nickelodeon's The Substitute, where WWE superstar John Cena teaches kids how to save someone from choking. He remembered Cena's lesson in the moment and saved his sister's life. I feel like a hero so much in my heart. Jackson says he thinks all kids should learn how to do the Heimlich. So if they have a little sister and she's choking, her parents should teach her how to pat her on the back and watch the very first episode of The Substitute. He's happy his baby sister is okay, and he has a message for Mr. Cena. I would say uh, thank you for being on that show. Uh, teach me a lot about how having to save someone's life. Caroline Forback, 2822 Eyewitness News. And let's bring in Caroline right now. She's joining us from Pennsylvania. Caroline, what a story. Uh, such a sweet boy. Definitely a hero. Um, you know, listening to that parent, it's such a scary situation because you don't know if your child, like you don't know what they're going to do. But in this situation, wow. Uh, what else did they have to say about that? And how has the community responded? Well, you can imagine the helplessness that the father felt as that was happening. I mean, he was driving the car and he told mm -hmm. me it took a little while for him to be able to pull over, but he was so impressed that Jackson was able to just step in without hesitation. And the community actually last night, the city of Hazleton held a hero parade for him. They made him junior fire chief. The mayor gave him a certificate for his bravery and he got a letter of recognition from the state. So he was very excited. Last night he said it was the best day of his life, so it was really cute to watch. That is so cool, and we're actually uh, taking a look at, I believe that's a picture of you and him out at the parade. Yeah, that what was, was last night. What was that like covering it? Honestly, it was like, it was kind of emotional just seeing how excited he was, mm -hmm. and the dad got a little bit emotional as the parade was rolling in. He was such, I mean, he's such a sweet, mm -hmm. sweet kid, and so, grateful he kept saying how thankful he was and it was really it was really really nice to watch it was nice yeah. to do a happy story like that after a absolutely you can just tell he absolutely adores his little sister now um you know sometimes you there's always parents who talk about got to limit what you watch on TV and and you know in this and they teach so many different lessons and this one he really took to heart. This is one thing he definitely remembered and I know that he had that message for John Cena. Any chance John Cena may have received that message? Has he responded? Well, we did um get a statement from Nickelodeon last night oh, just nice. saying that they were so proud of Jackson and they thanked him for watching the show. Um Talking to John Cena is in the works. Um, I don't want to like say too much about it, but we're trying. I'm trying. <laughs> no, that sounds good. Caroline, thanks so much for bringing us that, that heartwarming story. Uh, definitely a hero in everybody's eyes. Thanks so much. And keep us updated if John Cena Thank says you. something. Before we go, as you can imagine, there are a lot of people in Indianapolis because the NCAA tournament, but there are three guys that show what it means to be a fan. So these guys have been to every NCAA tournament for the last 35 years. Courtney Spinelli introduces us to the basketball mavens and explains why the Hoosier State is special for them. You know, we're just three random Joes that like college basketball. Three men with an extraordinary story. Jim Wickman, Tom Bowen, and John Reese call themselves the Basketball Mavens. It's the whole experience of March Madness that, you know, makes us just look forward to March every year. And when they say every year, they're not kidding. We've uh, been to 22 games already this month and have two more on tap tonight. Before this year, Jim and John have been to March Madness 38 times, including the last 35 straight tournaments. Tom's the rookie with only 30 years under his belt. I still carry the bags. I don't get a room key. 
<laughs> John missed some early rounds this year while waiting for his final COVID vaccine. Now he's hoping he gets a shot to see this weekend's games. It does take a lot of planning and so we jump on it early. They start planning months, even years in advance to make it happen. Saying, okay, which two cities are close enough to drive back and forth to? With all the games in Indiana this year, it saves the Mavens a bit of their usual driving. It's also a homecoming of sorts. I grew up uh, in Carmel in the 70s before it got so big. The trio met when they lived here in the 80s. Now they all live in Texas. The friendship would have remained strong even without this, but it does enhance it. And if you ask them how much they've spent over the last few decades, don't expect an answer. It is a closely held secret how much we spend because our wives would kill us if they knew. And they hope their tradition never ends. We want to continue doing this as long as we are able to. And, you know, it's just been so much fun. Reporting in downtown, Courtney Spinelli, CBS 4 News. And of course, we had to bring in Courtney for this story. I love this, Courtney. This is so much fun. Now I really want to know how much they actually spend on these trips. But um, what a really neat friendship. This is really, really special. How did you find out about these guys? These guys are extraordinary, and I have to add that they are a hoot to talk to. <laughs> I actually, back in February, was trying to think of some really neat March Madness stories that we could tell since all eyes were right here on the Hoosier State. I found a post from the NCAA years ago that said uh, these three guys never miss a tournament. Mm -hmm. Kind of gave a little bit of a background, so I figured I would just reach out, gauge their interest, and see if they would even be coming back and that's when we learned their Indianapolis connection that they actually met in Indy back in the 1980s when they worked here so the story just seemed to get better every single time mm -hmm. I talked to them and they they just enjoy college basketball they call themselves average Joes but they I don't think they're so average considering <laughs> how much they've done well, Courtney, great job tracking them down. Uh, in terms of speaking with them, was there um, a story or like a memorable moment throughout these years that really stood out to them that they shared with you? You know, one thing that they told me, and I didn't have a chance to get it in the story because I felt like I couldn't do it justice mm -hmm. uh, with the amount of time I had, was they, they name a most outstanding personality, an MOP, at the end of every single tournament. So they meet people along the way. They say that's their favorite part of it, whether it's a server, someone that they've met at a game, someone they've met while in their travels on the street, and they keep tally of all of the people they meet, and then they name the most outstanding personality at the end of every season. And they said it's something that they, they actually remember all of the people throughout the years, and that's one of their favorite things about coming to the tournament, and, and actually one of their favorite overall memories throughout the years, which I thought was so so yeah. neat. I mean, MOP. That I, is that's so new cool. <laughs> uh, you know, Courtney, this this story needs to go to Hollywood. I, I, I think there needs to be a movie made about this, and I think it'd be really good. What do you think? I think it would be a huge hit. They did tell me that they are in the process of writing a book. Oh. Uh, they joke that they don't know if they're the only three people who would buy the book, but <laughs> they hope that I, it would be a good way to just track what they've done over the years and and i said how do you keep track of those amount of yeah. memories over 36 and actually 39 overall that's just 36 consecutive uh, so <laughs> exactly. they they've done a lot i think it would make a great movie i definitely <laughs> think so too and i definitely want to continue following this story i'm glad to hear that it's not going to stop this year they're going to continue to do it as long as they can courtney again thanks so much for bringing us that awesome story i love that what a friendship Thank you so much for Thanks joining us for here me. this morning. We hope you are able to click back in tomorrow to kickstart your Friday. Oh, we made it finally. And uh, looking forward to the Easter weekend. And we're going to tell you all about what's trending tomorrow as well. We'll see you then.